from the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. More than 60 healthcare workers and senior executives from the Public Hospitals Authority received their first shots of the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine at the Princess Margaret Hospital yesterday, marking the official rollout of the country's vaccination campaign against the deadly coronavirus. This comes just over a week after the nation received 20,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine from the Indian government. Yesterday's vaccination session also follows the inoculations of Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, Health Minister Renwood Wells, and other officials who were among the nation's first to receive the injections as a part of a pilot phase conducted at Loyola Hall on Sunday. More than 100 people took part in that pilot. PMH Coordinator for Patient Registration and Scheduling Angelica Lockhart-Bastian told the Tribune yesterday morning that 50 healthcare workers and other hospital staff were expected to participate in yesterday's vaccination process at PMH. However, a PHA official later confirmed to the Tribune that a total of 61 workers had actually received their first injections of the two-dose vaccine yesterday, a situation the official stressed was not because of low interest. Social Services Minister Frankie Campbell said there were 382 reported cases of child abuse from January 2020 to February of this year. He did not have a comparative analysis for previous years. However, Mr. Campbell gave a breakdown of the numbers that showed neglect and sexual abuse were the most common types of abuse reported. He said the cases were reported to his ministry. He said that up to February of this year, officials had received 78 cases of physical abuse, 123 cases of sexual abuse, four cases of incest, 12 cases of verbal abuse, 6 cases of emotional abuse, 151 cases of neglect, and 8 cases of abandonment for a total of 382. He could not say if any of the perpetrators were arrested and prosecuted, but assured the public that police are involved. Bahamas Department of Correctional Services officers yesterday protested in a show of frustration, which they claim has stemmed from years of neglect and disrespect. Correctional Officers Staff Association President Hervey Culmer told the Tribune similar actions could persist for the remainder of the week, as officers were tired of their concerns falling on deaf ears. Their displeasure, Mr. Culmer said, was made worse yesterday after repeated attempts to speak to National Security Minister Marvin Dames at the Ministry of National Security, but they were unsuccessful because the minister reportedly evaded the scores of officers who had congregated at the compound. The officers began their protest at the BDCS at around 8 a.m., but later moved to the Ministry of National Security at John F. Kennedy Drive. Once congregated there, Mr. Culmer did meet with Mr. Dames, but he said that meeting was unsuccessful. Several dozen ZNS employees walked off the job yesterday to protest a salary deduction. In international news, the Biden administration is finalizing plans to send millions of AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine doses stockpiled and waiting for official usage approval in the U.S. over the border to Mexico and Canada, according to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki. During Thursday's White House press briefing, Psaki said, quote, I can confirm that we have 7 million releasable doses available of AstraZeneca President Joe Biden could announce the agreement upon finalization, which could happen as soon as Friday. On Tuesday, Mexico's foreign minister said an announcement could come by the end of the week. A review by the EU's medicines regulator has concluded the Oxford AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine is safe and effective. The European Medicines Agency investigated after 13 EU states suspended use of the vaccine over fears of a link to blood clots. It found the jab was not associated with a higher risk of clots. Italy announced it would resume using the jab on Friday, while Sweden said it needed a few days to decide. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A ridge of high pressure across the island chain will continue to dominate weather conditions as it shifts eastwards through tonight ahead of an approaching cold front expected on Friday. Beachgoers should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents. In the extreme northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, very warm and breezy, with a chance of a few isolated showers through tonight. A small craft's caution is in effect. Winds are south to southwest at 15 to 20 knots, but gusts at times. Seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean, but higher in gusts. For the remainder of the northwest, central, and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy and warm with a passing shower or two possible this afternoon, becoming mostly fair and mild tonight. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots in the remainder of the northwest and central Bahamas. East to southeast at 15 knots in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest and central Bahamas, building 3 to 5 feet but slightly higher in subsiding swell. 
Charles. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 85 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 71. The sun will set this afternoon at 718 and will rise tomorrow morning at 715. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.